Hello YouTube, I'm Dazzling One, and I'd like to thank KJ again from the scariest movie ever for uploading my three-part series onto his channel, and to all of you for watching. I appreciate you sharing your experiences. Today, I'm going to address the worldwide epidemic of demon possession. Most people, when they hear the words demon possession, an image from an exorcist film comes to mind. Although some cases are that, are that severe, Hollywood has done a lot to shape our perception of it. The truth is, there are millions, maybe even billions of people worldwide walking around possessed. But most, if they walk down the street beside you, it would be hard to tell and they'd go undetected. Why? Because possession is more than just the crazy things movies show us. Before we can understand possession, we must first understand how people become possessed. Because people don't just wake up one day and a demon lives inside them. And why would a demon want to possess a person? Well, from the previous video I made, I sort of went over briefly the origins of demons. I will repeat this again. Demons are not fallen angels. Fallen angels fell from heaven and are still angels, whereas demons are the dead spirits of the Nephilim, the wives of the watchers who are known as the sirens or, or marine spirits or are from the pre-Adamic age. A lot of people like to dismiss it, but Genesis 1-2 it states that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. It says he created the earth, but it says it was formless and a spirit was hovering over the waters. In the beginning doesn't necessarily mean when Adam was immediately made. We know the angels were already in existence before the creation of man, and some even believe Lucifer ruled the, over the earth in the pre-Adamic age. And whatever race of beings on earth and after their fall, I believe this is where some demons come from, and the rest, as I stated, are the dead Nephilim from Noah's time. With this said, a common feature of demons is the ideal that they enjoy possessing people. And like in my video and like in my other video series, I discuss marine spirits or incubuses and succubuses, male and female sex demons. I believe, like it says in Enoch 15, the reason demons are obsessed with possessing humans is because they have no body, although they are bound to the earth and cannot leave it. Whereas fallen angels, excluding the watchers, locked up in Tartarus, I believe, like, I believe live in another dimension and in space, and visit earth time to time, and can take on various forms of animals, humans, and people, and blend in with society. We know in Hebrews 13 too, it states, don't forget to show hospitality to strangers, for some who have done this have entertained angels without realizing it. We know the same can go for fallen angels, so as far as us entertaining them without knowing it. In Psalm 78:49, he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. So we know it is possible to walk past a fallen angel and never notice they aren't human. And also... Believe this is I believe this is where the legends of shapeshifters come from since they're since these fallen angels can take on various forms. In Enoch nineteen one, and Uriel said to me, Here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women, and their spirits assuming many different forms are defiling mankind and shall lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as gods. Here shall they stand till the day of the great judgment in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. So we see they took on various forms. So they could so they could sleep with the women, and so they could corrupt the animals, insects, and everything else. This is why some people believe that the reptilians need to drink blood to stay in this dimension. I believe that reptilians and fallen angels are synonymous, and fallen angels actually drink the blood to stay here longer. This is why the Illuminati loves the color red, because of bloodshed, sacrifice, and I heard some even drink the women's menstrual blood in covens, which is disgusting. And the color blue because the elite believe they are the blue bloods. The fallen angels drink the blood since I believe God made it difficult for them to stay in this dimension. To live amongst us permanently. And this is why there's this obsession with stargates and portals. So that they can find a way to stay here permanently and manifest themselves to us. I believe it will happen during the tribulation. Going back to demons, they do not have a problem staying on earth. This is also... This is all they know, but they live in another dimension, unseen to our eyes. It is my belief before the fall of man, he is used a hundred. He used to use a hundred percent of his brain, and part of his 
abilities were to see spirits and a lot of these special abilities some people have like pyrokinesis may actually be people who have access to, to those parts of their brain we don't today this is why magic is so appealing because these demons and fallen angels assist these people in opening up and using those parts of course it comes with a price before we go on there are demons that dwell in hell actually there are more than there are more down there than there are on earth and my evidence for this is in the apocryphal book of jubilee chapter 10 it tells a story and i'll read it to you first one and in the third week of the jubilee the unclean demons began to lead astray the children of the sons of noah and to make to err and destroy them and the sons of noah came to noah their father and they told him concerning the demons which were leading astray and blinding and slaying their and slaying his son, sons and he prayed before the Lord his God and said God of the spirits of all flesh who has shown mercy unto me and has saved me and my sons from the waters of the flood and has not caused me to perish as thou didst the sons of perdition for thy grace has been great towards me and great has been thy mercy to my soul let thy grace be left up lift up upon my sons and let nor wicked let nor wicked spirits roll over them lest they show lest they should destroy them from the earth but do thou bless me and my sons that we may increase and multiply and replenish the earth and thou knowest how the thy watchers and the fathers of these spirits acted in my day and as for these spirits which are living imprison them and let them not bring destruction on the sons of thy servants my god for these are malignant and created in order to destroy and let not rule over the spirits of the living for thou alone can canest exercise dominion over them and let them not have power over the sons of the righteous from henceforth and forevermore and the lord our god bade us to find all and the chief of the spirits massima came and said lord creator let some of them re remain before me and let them hearken to my voice and do all that i shall unto them i say i shall say unto them for if some of them are not left for me i shall not be able to execute the power of my will on the sons of men for these are the for for these are for corruption and leading astray before my judgment for great is the wickedness of the sons of men in verse 11 it goes on to say and we did according to all his words all the malignant evil ones we bound in the place of condemnation and a tenth part of them we left that they might be subject before satan on earth so here we see after the flood the demons were doing all kinds of horrible things most likely for revenge for being killed in the flood and also because they wanted to prevent the messiah from coming through the human bloodline because demons and fallen angels hate mankind and But God limited them and what they could do. And Satan, who was referred to as Mastema here, begged for not all of them to be bound so they could follow him. And he bound up around 90% of them. So although demons are a problem, most are in hell, of course. This is why every paranormal book and story is obsessed with opening the gates of hell and portals to free the rest of them. We know from the book of Enoch, when demons were living as Nephilims, they were vampires and cannibals. This is why, for the longest time, we have seen an interest in entertainment for vampires and cannibals because they want us to grow more and more fonder of this. I also want to add that I saw the movie I Frankenstein a little over a couple of weeks ago, and in the movie, the monster who Victor created, who happens to have no soul, is the good guy and saves the world from the demons with, with, with the help of the gargoyles, which reminded me a lot of the fallen angels because the demons were trying to reanimate the dead since they had no soul so demons could use their bodies to destroy mankind it was odd but it's not the strangest thing because the reason they want they want it to in all reality is because when you think about when scientists make all these genetically engineered creatures and aliens make hybrids and all this kind of stuff it's because they want more nephilim so the demons can have more bodies possessed because they have no soul because no matter how hard fallen angels try and demons they can't create a being with a soul if that's a gift only God can give if you think about it they are limited in what they can do with a human body as well 
Although they possess and they hate mankind, find themselves superior to us. This is why all of the elite believe they are modern-day Nephilim, with ties back to the Watchers, and hate all of us because they see themselves as gods, fit to rule over us. And this is why many of them are demon-possessed with the with those reptilian, shape-shifting looking. Like that's why you see all that footage all the time. We know that the devil is the prince of this world. It says this in John 12:31. The time for judging this world has come when Satan, the ruler of this world, will be cast out. So we know this is not too far-fetched. This is the reason why, like I said in my last video, they love possessing people in positions of power and celebrities because for them it is so easy to be worshipped. It's just a theory of mine that a lot of, of these women who seem to put a spell on everyone, including other women with their extreme sex appeal, are possessed by a lot of these sucky spirits and it helps them move. Plus, I've heard stories that some of them use astral projection and they actually put spells in their music to make themselves seem more appealing. You won't forget it because a lot of songs are spells. We've heard it straight from the horse's mouth from Katy Perry saying she sold her soul to Nicki Minaj saying she has a demon named Roman living inside her. Some people argue and defend these people and say they say they say they are Christians or they go to church and so on. But all you have to do is take a look at their fruit. What are their songs and videos promoting? And, and, it, and it speaks for itself. Because actions speak a lot louder than words. Although I do believe a lot of them see no way out and are miserable. And um, endure MK Ultra, Which I believe are the child stars. They are opened up to demons. Basically when demons... When a, basically when a person sells their soul. They have someone who is a summoner who will summon the demon for them. Notice how they practice in front of the mirror to, to call it into them, but yeah, a lot of them are afraid of mirrors. And it's not that their soul is gone, per se, but they are now demon-possessed. Thank you for watching, and please um, continue on.